Welcome. Geologic evidence that the Earth was once a huge single landmass can also be proved by showing that there are clectospheres, which are metallic balls that were found in South Africa, clectop in Southern Africa, three billion years ago, showing that human activity and ingenuity or engineering was already prevalent on the Earth three billion years ago, which causes us to raise the question. Who were these engineers or metal machinists? What we know definitely is that Europeans appeared on the earth maybe 8,500 years ago. So the earth was populated by melanin-dominant human beings prior to that. From this observation alone, we would like to ask the question, who then is indigenous in Canada? By saying another Canada before this Canada. The history of Canada covers the timeline from the arrival of the Paleo Indians, whom we are told look like this. To the north of the United States, thousands of years ago to the present. Who are these Paleo Indians? Where did they come from? Are they still the same people with the indigenous people that were there? Or they have changed because we know that due to European massive genocide and intermarriages, only few traces of the original indigenous people can easily be found and worked with are today. Such that what we are told as the first nations in Canada are a new uh, people in a new Canada that emerged after years of European agenda. We know from study that Paleo Indians. 10,000 to 8,000 years ago, blacks had already settled in Canada before 130,000 years BCE. The world's most recent glacial period lasted uh, from, uh, from 110,000 to 12,500. So you can see Canada was already full of ice. So people that migrated to Canada and are the Paleo Indians came from the tropics and they would really look like this. They don't look like this anyway. We know that there was uh, another Canada uh, before uh, Canada. We know that the animals found in ancient Canada, in America, there are also same as in Africa, especially the mastodon as well as the mammoth. We see their descendants in Africa today. So that proves a point. From these observations, let us ask who actually is indigenous or the first nations people in Canada. We know that uh, Eskimos, now known as Inuits, live in an area where there is little exposure to the sun and they are brown. So where did these other people that are not brown come from? We have terms that have come up through scientists and writers like Mesoamerica which means Mexico and Central America, pre-Columbian, which is before Columbus, and Amer Indian, which is indigenous Indians of North and South America, Paleo-Indian or Paleo-American, who are the original black settlers of the Americas. These are the ones that we want to show they were the original Canadians before Canada became Canada. If you were a Paleo-Indian, here is what you should know and accept. There are some morphological studies that have suggested the Northeast Asian affinity of present-day Native Americans contrasted with a distinctive morphology seen in earliest American skeletons which share traits with the present-day Australasians, indigenous groups in Australia, Melanesia, in Southeast Asia. The full article, you can get it from nature.com articles, is there. So how was it populated? This is how it was populated. We know that the first migrants to Australia were part of a wave that originally left Africa and worked their way through Arabia and Asia. They reached Australia about 45,000 years ago. A second wave traveled from India and uh, reached Australia 4,200 years ago by boat and are thought to have brought the dingo, the animal called the dingo, with them. Now, this is the map that shows mountain ranges in the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, many ocean islands are actually the visible parts of submerged mountains. 
over time mountains rise up and mountains go down in a process called orogeny therefore over a long period of time islands disappear and islands appear uh, ancient men may well have island hopped using islands that no longer existed that's very very clear so island hopped from australia right into many other parts of south america we want to quote more from uh, the study of nature that we quoted above which says they analyze genome wide data to show that some amazonian and native americans descend partly from a native american founding population that carried ancestry more closely related uh, to indigenous australians new guineans and andaman islanders than to any present day eurasians or native americans that's very powerful and very very true who then are the first nations people in canada we are always showing these people but the proof from all, all what we have said and from this website these are the people they look like that they were originally black settlers in america we call them the paleo american which is a classification given to them uh, to the first peoples who entered and subsequently inhabited the american continent during the final glacial episodes to the of the late pleistocene period the original people of america are the black paleo americans these are the first humans inhabitants in that part of the earth that's a fact now when you go and ask now the question who is canada's first black person they show you this man matthew d costa who arrived in 1608 in canada who helped uh, translate the uh, Mi'kmaq language of the governor of Acadia? He was an interpreter for Dutch and French explorers. Now listen to what they say. Here. But historians have a hard time finding evidence that he visited the Saint Lawrence River and who he arrived with. Many theories suggest he was with Samuel de Champlain or Pierre d'Agua de Mons when he arrived but many aspects of his life are unknown he died in 1619 in quebec city but here is the question what about the modern chimsia region that produces these masks soapstone masks like this who do they look like and these are known to be 2000 years old so 2000 years old we have people like this and then we hear about 16 Oh, eight, that he was the first one we know history is lying that's a straightforward fact long before it was the name of an independent country canada was a broad geographic term used to describe the northern half of north america this while canadian spelled this way and canadian spelled that way as the french want was the term described by the french colonists of the area the name canada this one is believed to have its roots in the Huron Iroquois word Kanata, meaning village. So Kanata before Canada. We know that Kunata means to drink water or any liquid. Original Canadians now. You will never see populated or popularized in movies look like this. Alcoquin, these are the people, Bantus, melanin dominant human beings. These are the Canadian West Coast Substone 400 AD. This is Alcoquin Patawomek people. You go to this website and you find a lot more images. During the time when European explorers were going all over the shore and were in uh, America, they illustrated a lot of what they saw in travel logs. One of the books you can find is this America New World Empires, Mexico and Peru Plantations. And then you find that they tell you that the indigenous people they found looked like this. They were black people, melanin dominant people whom they were massacring and in, a, in genocide after genocide. Also, they didn't kill everybody. They intermarried and produced mulatto Indians. But among us that we still see the Chippewas look like this with an Afro telling us where they come from and their dress way and their customs and their costumes exactly as melanin dominant human beings anywhere else on earth ever wondered why the blackfoot were called the blackfoot because they were black 
Again, we see Apache Indian, a squaw here, 1873, they are Bantus. Again, Howard King photograph, Blackfeet people, they are Bantus here. But he is changing. He's no longer as pure as a Blackfoot that we know in our better Canada. Again, like many others, intermarriages and the change of morphology follows. These are the dancing Yuchi Aka Koyaha warriors. And now we are told that these are the men and the band here, a Yuchi Aka Koyaha. Look at the difference. It's massive. And again, we see the mulattoes are coming and populating the whole atmosphere. In conclusion, therefore, what we know, surprisingly enough, is that there is one enduring evidence of the Africans' travel or melanin dominant human beings' travel and the populating the whole earth. They left their mark. They left a proof. This proof is the totem. It is found in every corner of the world. This is the African totem or totem pole. And this is the Canadian native totem pole. You can see the totems here. You can see the similarities here. And uh, you can actually think it's the other way around. But this is the proof. And also music, dance, and spirituality is the same. This is the African dance. And this is the dance in amongst the Canadians or indigenous Kanata. So-called Kanata. Looks like that. So same. Same dance, same way. Rishakati here. Same head there. So you cannot uh, lose a lot. But this is what history tells us now. This is the state of affairs now. And these are the people now we are told this is a modern American Indian woman or modern American Indian children. What a change. And if we are not careful and if we do not guard our knowledge, we will end up thoroughly confused thinking that we are foreigners in lands where we are indigenous. We are one. And we are the oldest melanin dominant human beings or race on earth. Because of massive divisions, we are perishing. It's time to unite and to fight to survive, to help us in this endeavor and to restore the real Canadians back on top mentally and physically. Do not delay. Get in touch. Send us an email on join at marifado.com If you want to learn more and if you think spiritual and cultural congruence is worth it again we challenge you to send us an email share comment and subscribe to our channel Hamiti Iburu Ethics thank you very much Tatenda Siabonga Teacher Rabbi Elem Tumizlu Galkal Kunkenim Jakanja Mskan